Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with another Old World Diaries video. So when I did my first one last week, I talked about the idea of uh, showing you guys as much from the Old World as humanly possible to prepare you guys for its general release. Obviously, we still don't have any real information on it, um, like a solid release date. We just know it's very early 2024. So we are getting it in the first month or two of 2024. So we're very excited about this. Now, I've already given you some Bretonian videos and you guys have taken to that very well. You're very excited by that. And obviously, Tomb Kings is another huge one that they are showing off for the launch of the new game system. So I thought I would also show you guys a couple of videos based on those. So I actually started a Tomb of Kings army in uh, Age of Sigmar times, which I know is absolutely ridiculous. I had to buy this entire army secondhand off eBay. It cost me a fortune to do, but I actually completed the entire collection. There's no models I do not own from Tomb of Kings anymore. Um, so I don't really want to talk about how much that costs, but here we are. So now they're all on the wrong basis. I put them all on oval bases and round bases for Age Sigmar. There's no real rules for Age Sigmar. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make sure that these fit in and work beautifully for the old world. And I've been getting a lot of requests from people asking me to show them through some Tomb King stuff. So that's what I'm going to do here today. And I'm going to start with what I consider to be the most iconic thing in the Tomb King's army. You can let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree, but it is the chariot. No other army could field so many chariots and no other army could field units of chariots like the Tomb Kings could. So in today's video, I'm going to put together a set of three new chariots or old chariots. They're actually released in 2002, so they are coming up on 22 years old. Um, so I'm going to yeah, cut them off their oval bases, uh, laser cut some uh, new bases for them uh, and a tray. Uh, I get one of them built and painted for you guys so you can see the whole process. So hopefully this will uh, scratch an itch for you guys and you'll get a better sense of what Tomb Kings actually are. So yeah, before I get into it though, big thank you to my patrons. You guys are amazing. Without you guys, I could not continue doing what I'm doing. So if you'd like to get involved with that, there's links to it below. You get things like access to a private Discord server and an extra video every single week just for you guys. 52 extra videos a year. It's not half bad. Okay, without further ado, let's, uh, let's see what we can do with the chariot. Okay, so like I talked about previously um, in other videos, I do have a laser cutter. And I tend to use that to uh, laser cut the kind of bases and trays that I need for my uh, rebasing of my old world armies. So I did, um, I think it was 360 by 120 bases. This is a suggested chariot basing scheme that I can get off of Green Stuff World. That's what they reckon. And hopefully they know something more than I do. Or maybe I've made a terrible mistake, but I took a guess. I did my normal thing where I lasered out the tray as well. Just use, using my Creality Falcon 2. Really nice laser cutter. All the bells and whistles. I uh, can't recommend it enough if it's something that you're interested in getting your hands on. So yeah, that's just what I used. Now, Blast and Plast. Here is the actual original Chariot box set. As you can see, it's battered and bruised. But for some reason, I wanted to keep the box set over these years. In my box of kind of unused parts for my Tomb Kings. I'm kind of glad I did. This is one that I built for Age of Sigmar. It's about as far as I got. I built 12 of them to this standard, which is just, you know, the horse on the chariot and the, the bow and spear stuck onto the side. But no bladed bit on the front, no crew built, no banner, musician, or any of those bits and pieces. So I had to then decide which I wanted to do. Obviously get it cut off of this base, uh, get it cleaned up. Obviously it's quite dusty. It's been sitting around for quite a long time. Being careful, sharp scalpel and a hobby saw to remove uh, it off of the base. I obviously didn't want to destroy these bases. These bases are, you know, they cost a little bit of money. And there's quite a lot of 12 of them and that I want to keep good. I may use them in a future project down the world. So I, I kept them in decent enough condition in case I wanted to reuse them. After that, I just lined them into the position that I wanted to put it on the base. Added super glue around the feet and the wheels to secure it in place, let that dry fully. Found, cut out, glued up the crew, added the bits that were missing off the chariot, like the, the blade that goes between the horses on the front. Got them all sprayed up. This time I sprayed them with Chaos Black and then a Wraith Bone on top of that. Give it a little bit more warmth for that uh, Tomb King's aesthetic. And then, yeah, I got started with Skeleton Horde. Seemed like the appropriate contrast to use to get started with all the bones. Yeah, I could have used Agaros Dunes which is something I tend to do with things, but I want it to be that real worn, sun-bleached looking bone. If you've seen on the box that they did previously, uh, they're like really, really white uh, skeleton horses, real cartoony looking. And I didn't want that. I want to go a little bit more, like I said, realistic, a little bit more grim. Um, and that like endless marching of bone under the sweltering desert sun, I think is definitely going to be more of a yellowy brown uh, tone to the bone as opposed to that like bleached bone look. I did some of the other parts in the same color just to help it blend in. 
Uh, obviously, we'll go over those a few other colors later on, so don't worry about that. Flesh Tears Red was then applied to quite a lot of the rest of the model, to be honest, almost all of it. You may think that this is crazy, but basically the inner part, the painted part of the chariot is indeed red, at least the ones on the boxes are, and the one that I'm going to go for for my particular army. This is where you can change your tone or your scheme if you want to do a different color. The reason I did so much other parts in red is red makes an absolutely fantastic base coat for gold. And obviously lots of the other parts of the model are going to be gold as well. Uh, painting the crew alongside uh, the chariot as, uh, as well uh, just helps speed up time. So as you can see, quite a lot of red seems kind of crazy. Added some texture paste onto the base. This is the sandy desert uh, diorama from AK. And then it was time for the Retributor Armor Gold. Now this is where the model will kind of go from the kind of ugly stage that I was worried about at this stage. I'm like, what am I doing to this poor model? And once I kind of started to apply the gold in the right places, it really did pull the scheme together and it made me feel a lot more confident about finishing it off and getting it done. So that's what I did here. And like I said, there's quite a lot of gold. And the examples they do, this whole design they do on the front of the chariot here, they do a lot more, you know, there's some gold and there's some blue and there's some this. And I decided to go for a solid gold plate um, and I think it does the trick really well. So soldiering through, making sure I get the rest of it, the bits that are built into the the bridley bit or the bit that holds the horsey to the chariot. I don't know what they're called. I'm not a horseologist. Okay, but here's all the gold on the chariot. And as you can see, it does make a huge difference with the sandy base, the red golden bone. I definitely think the scheme is going to work. And then obviously carrying that through onto the uh, the skeleton charioteers, um, the bits on his helmet, the the bit that goes around their, their, their shoulders around the front. I'm sure that also has some crazy cool Egyptian name that I do not know. Gorgrunt of Fur was brought in for the straps. It's just basically a cross section of straps that go across for both the uh, charioteers. I ended up in the end going around the bottom of the straps on their feet with this. I kind of missed it at this stage, but I did correct it by the time I got to the end of the video. And I also decided to play along with the rest of the, the whip. So the handle and the whip of the charioteer I did in the same color as well. Then it was just time for a bit of uh, lead belcher silver for the blades. And there wasn't too many other, like obviously Tomb Kings are well known for their uh, golden aesthetic. Not a lot of silver, but obviously sharpened blades are going to be silver. So this guy holding his giant I don't know, pike spear thing. And then obviously the one that goes between the horses. And you know, the tips of the spears in the basket next to the star. There's a few other bits and pieces. Just go and find all them and make sure you get them done in a nice silver tone. After that, it's time to shade the entire miniature. And with this, I actually took a, a step back and I considered it for quite a while, whether I was going to go for sepia or Reichland Flesh Shade. Now, Reichland Flesh Shade might seem like a crazy choice, but Reichland Flesh Shade goes over red, red and gold really, really well because it has a red tone in it. Sepia would, uh, it's a little bit colder. It might look better on the bone. I did a little test section and I did actually find it did look really good on the bone for that, like I said, that bleached under the sun look, the worn old bone, the Reichland Flesh Shade did actually work a treat. So I did end up going ahead I'm painting the entire chariot um, with uh, Reichland Flesh Shade um, to shade everything down. Uh, I'm really happy with this decision and I will carry that through with the rest of the army as well. And as you can see how much it immediately just sets off the gold. Then it was time for some Screaming Skull um, after all the shade had dried obviously. And I'm just adding some quick highlights to the, uh, the skeleton uh, crew. Now I decided later on it was kind of at this stage that I realized that I'm, I'm going overboard with the colors on these guys. I think what I would have done previously is I would have done all the bone bits and then dry brushed up this stage, then jumped to the gold um, and the red and stuff like that. So obviously dry brushing will be the way I do most of this force. There's going to be quite a lot of models to get through and I do not have time to uh, kind of screaming skull brush highlight every single piece. Of it. it would take too long. That's not something that would excite me at all. Tomb Kings is definitely an army that I really like the idea of owning and playing, but it's not something that excites me to paint all that much. I would much rather spend a lot more time on my Bretonians and then get this army done in a really fast kind of army painter style. After the bone was all dry burst, I jumped to Mephiston Red. I used the air one just because it's basically like a pre-thinned red color and it works a treat for layering. And then I just layered up all of the uh, red parts of the model. So obviously the painted part of the chariot and then the shafts of the spear and the bow, uh, the the red bits on the actual charioteers themselves as well. Neat and tidy. It obviously going to make it pop. I did not want to leave it just the, the shaded Reichland Fest shaded red. I want it to be a bit more color. Obviously the red is the spot color for this army to make it pop. Carrying it of course across to the crew. Taking my time and being careful. Obviously the gold is all done and the bone is all done. You don't want to be going back and making mistakes with that. Yeah, or else it's going to be kind of hard to fix them. 
I am glad I decided to go with the painted weapons. The the big red uh, kind of shafts and stuff like that are actually great for the spot clear on the crew. If I had just done, gone for some of that you know, boring brown wood color on this, I think the whole model itself would have just become a little bit too dull. Uh, and it wouldn't have screamed. I actually forgot to re uh, record what paint, but this is Zandri Dust I'm using to uh, highlight the quivers or um, cases or I don't know what they're holders for the bow and the spear on the sides of the, the chariot as well. Really quick and easy step. At this stage, you could use this to highlight the wheels as well. Maybe that's something I should have done, but I kind of want to get some uh, deserty, sandy colored pigment and uh, run that through um, the bottoms of the chariot around the wheels and things of the horse. I think that would look really cool. Lead belch was then brought in to highlight the metallics. Once again, the gold and silver parts were highlighted with just a little touch of silver. It, this a trick works so well. It's such a quick and easy and effective way of doing it. And with those bits done, with the silver done, that's pretty much all the standard that I will take this miniature to. I will spend a little bit of time positioning and gluing in the crew of the chariot onto the miniature. It's obviously a very small area to fight from and I'm trying to fit two charioteers on. It was a bit of a pain to do. Maybe I'll think about a bit more about the placement of these models before I construct them or as I'm constructing them. But as a whole, finished dry brushing up the base, black rimmed it, loved how the base turned out, loved how the model turned out, wish I could see it as a unit of three chariots today, but that's obviously going to wait a little bit of time. Here's what it looks like on an actual gaming table, a sandy mat with the model. Super happy with the result. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Another little trip down memory lane or now a hint for the future when it comes to the old world. And uh, I can't wait to bring you more old world content very, very soon. Okay guys, and there we have it. I have completed another Old World video, this time of course for the Tomb Kings. I've gotten my first Tomb Kings chariot painted up. I think one of the most important things or lessons to take away from this video is obviously if, you, if you're coming into the Old World and you never experienced the old style Warhammer before, I think it's important to note that the armies tend to be quite a lot larger than something that you might be used to. So they can be 100, 150 miniatures in an army, you know, literally block upon block of you know, 20, 30 strong uh, miniatures, um, and that can seem quite daunting. So it's important to know what level to take your miniatures to. I could have continued painting this chariot for another two or three hours, really lavishing the detail on it. But considering that I may have two units of six chariots in my army, that's 12 chariots. Do you know, like I cannot spend the amount of time I want to on one chariot and then replicate that across 11 more. That's, that's not possible. So if I take it to a nice uh, uh, standard that I am happy with and replicate that, it will look fantastic on an army scale. Ranked up stuff looks great as long as it's painted. Okay guys, I hope you did enjoy this video. Please let me know if you are enjoying the Old World videos. Like I said, I want to cover a wide variety of, of content for the Old World. I'm going to really champion this, I promise you that. Um, and obviously the, the eight specific armies they've announced for launch, I'm going to get videos out for all of them before the Old World drops. So just let me know what you would like to see. And um, if you want to see more uh, Bretonian videos, let me know. More Tomb Kings videos, let me know. More Beastman videos, you want some High Elves, you want some Dark Elves, Empire. Just let me know guys and I will be happy to deliver it for you. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a like. Ask me any questions you want in the comments below. Make sure that you're subscribed. It does make a huge difference. Thanks so much for sticking around at the end. I'll see you in the next video.